So in previous video, part one, we walked through the reasoning behind the choice of architecture for differential amplifier using pre op amps. Um, now, we want to find a differential gain and common mode gain. Um, knowing that you're dealing with ideal op amps in linear mode of operation, so for this uh, final op amp, input voltages should have the same value uh, the virtual short property of ideal op amp in negative feedback loop. So that's why we have Vn equal to Vp, uh, the voltages of inverting and non-inverting terminals. Uh, that's equation one. Then from KCL, written for Vy, which is the voltage at this point, and Vp and zero, we know there is no current flowing to input terminals of op ideal op amp in um, so because of that property, we can write down the current flowing through R2 is the same current flowing through R3, and that's the source of this KCL, Vy minus Vp divided by R2 is equal to Vp minus 0 divided by R3. From there, we get the, this relationship between Vp and Vy. So that's equation 2. Another KCL, for well, the same reasoning that current flowing from output through R3 goes through R2 as well, so we can write down a KCL V out minus Vn divided by R3, that's this current, equal to Vn minus Vx divided by R2, that's this current. So from there, we can get this relationship between V out, Vn, and Vx. That's equation 3. Applying 1 in 2, we get Vn is R3 over R2 plus R3 times V1. And then from 3, when we apply this, Instead of Vn, we get V out is R2 plus R3 divided by R2 times, we are replacing Vn with this guy, so R3 divided by R2 plus R3 times Vy minus R3 over R2 times Vx. So we can uh, simplify this uh, into equation 4, which says V out is just simply R3 divided by R2 times Vy minus Vx. Now, Again, knowing that these two op amps are also ideal op amps in linear mode of operation, so the voltage here should be equal to V1, and the voltage here should be equal to V2, because these two op amps are in negative feedback loop and in linear mode of operation. So the current flowing through R gain is just simply V1 minus V2 divided by R gain. But that current has to flow through R1 on top and R1 at bottom as well. So we can say Vx minus Vy is just R1 plus R gain plus R1 divided by R gain times the voltage across R gain, which is V1 minus V2. That's summarized here. So now, replacing Vy minus Vx from 4 in 4 by this one from in 5, we can easily see that V out is 1 plus 2R1 divided by R gain times R3 over R2 times V2 minus V1. That's the relationship between output and the delta V, or differential input voltage. So the differential gain is simply this guy. Uh, and we have the R gain as variable register that we can control the gain uh, by playing with. For common mode gain, ideal common mode gain is zero. But by ideal, we mean when we have a fully symmetric circuit where R1 on top is exactly equal to R1 on bottom and R2 on top and R2 on bottom same, and R3 and uh, top and bottom same. In that scenario, uh, when V1 and V2 are equal to each other, then V out is zero. That's why ideal common mode gain is zero. And since uh, common mode rejection ratio is just uh, uh, differential gain divided by common mode gain, uh, it's infinite, ideal. But in real life, there is always a mismatch between R1 uh, on top and bottom and be between R2 and R3 as well. So we are dealing with some level of mismatch. Therefore, in real life, uh, common mode uh, gain is not zero, and CMRR is less, is uh, some, non some finite value. 